November 26, 1956. As Eamon is onto the stage of the television theatre, a car is being driven through the darkened streets of London. Three passengers in that car. Two of them were in our secret. The third was Harry S. Pepper, principal subject for This Is Your Life on that night. The driver knew to an exact second when he was to pull up outside the disguised scenery doors of this theatre. And this is what happened. Well, Harry, believe you me, I was very happy to see you when you came through that door. We always are happy to see people when we go through these agonizing seconds. What Was it a surprise? Well, it was an absolute shock, really. More than a surprise, yes. But, but you knew about this program, uh, This Is Your Life, didn't you? Well, I, I've never missed it. It's one of my favorite programs. We argue about how the way people have been lured up here, you know, Doris and I. You, you, you did yourself wonder how we got people oh, through the Oh, definitely, oil? yes. Uh -huh. All the time we've always argued about that. But nevertheless, that. you fell for it yourself. Uh, and, and now, I'd like to hear from you, the real lowdown, you know, some yes. people and... Uh, well, I... I was asked to go to Broadcasting House to um, attend a pub music publishers meeting with Ronnie Waldman uh, to judge the... to do something about the competition for the song. It was a festival of songs, you know. So I arrived there at six... And uh, the publishers and Ronnie Walden were there, but of course what I didn't know was that they'd already had the meeting at five o'clock before I got there. <laughs> so they ran through another one, what you call a dummy run, for my benefit alone. And after the meeting, wasn't it, uh, Ronnie Walden asked you for a lift in your car to the studio? Yes, yeah, so he, he wasn't very, really, very popular. Anybody else would have had to take the taxi, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I thought, well, I was so sorry about it because I'm afraid I was going to, this is your life, you see. Well, well, when he did get you in the car, I can understand that because it was a very elaborate ruse, but when he got you to the studios, or what you thought were Riverside Studios, how did he get you in here? Oh, well, I sat very grandly on in the car. Doris got out, and the driver got out, and Ronnie got out, and then Ronnie said, well, uh, won't you come in and see some of the gadgets? So I thought, was, well, well I, I've missed what, 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 this is your life now, so, well, so I came in. <laughs> well, instead of missing it, you, you, you made it. Now, uh, as you can imagine, uh, Harry, getting uh, all the details of your story without you knowing was quite a problem, and That's it, well, uh, yes. deep in that problem was Doris oh. here. How did you manage to keep the secret, Doris? Was I deep in it, my goodness? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it, it was difficult, really, because we now live in a tiny little cottage in Denham, and I wouldn't have dared phone any of the all the information that was required, and um, nobody would have dared phone me because we're together all day long, and so... I couldn't really have done it at all without the help of our immediate neighbour, who happens to be Mrs. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Michael Barry, um, Michael, head of television drama, of course. And fortunately, and they often, often go in and have a gossip, gossip with Posy, as I call her, over a cup of tea. And believe me, we had a lot of gossips in that fortnight before the programme. Peter Moore came down to see me there. And he also came to see me once at the hairdressers while I was having a perm, which must have looked very funny, I think. And, uh... Yeah, it's a piece of television drama that I uh, didn't see. But after the program, <laughs> Harry, tell me, what was the reaction of your friends? How did they take it? Well, the reaction was a lot of stars, bless their hearts, rang me up and were rather disappointed that they weren't in it. And I said, well, I didn't know anything about it at all. And I don't think it, they believed it, really. And then a lot of friends rang me up and said, well, you might at least have let us know that, so that we could look. <laughs> and I said, well, I didn't know anything about it at all. And, and one of them said, oh, come on, man, you can't put it over <laughs> me like that. <laughs> well, that's something we, we always have to take the blame for, really, because it's impossible anyway in 30 minutes to include all the people and all the stories that we find. It's one of our biggest headaches, but uh, you were one of our biggest pleasures, Harry. Thank you. And thank you, Doris Arnold, very much. <laughs>